Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Good to have you all back on Tuesday, busiest day of my month. Getting ready to go back to work. It's a hectic one because next stop back is Christmas. So yeah, if I haven't got it done today, pretty much it ain't gonna happen. Uh, yeah, which is not a good feeling. I'm sure most of these guys that, have, that work away or work, know uh, about working away, it's the last day is always trying to remember what you've forgotten <laughs> to do in the week off, in those magic six days you have off. Um, and yeah, it's because it's always a pain in the ass when you get back to work to try and actually get anything done. You've either got to fight with bosses or the fact that you're just in the middle of nowhere and you can't do anything. So I think I'm okay. I think so. See how we go. <laughs> but um, look, hey, uh, last night it was a good night. I got the first test run of the RP. I got to take her out and give her a ride. And look, different. Definitely different from the M50. Uh, the M50, I pretty much know back to front now. Three years or two, two, I think, yeah, a bit over two years now I've had her. And yeah, I can pretty much go in there blindfold. I know where everything is. And it ain't the same. Um, I've got custom modes set up, which I sort of set up and I've got all that. I think I got all that right, but then I had to learn how to do the bulb. Bulb's different where you could basically just go over in manual and then go to bulb. You can't do that with this. So just little bits and pieces I need to learn with it. Um, definitely a different way of shooting. Uh, you don't have to go into, auto, or basically you can enable auto bracketing set up. So that's worked out. So there's a lot to there. There's also auto uh, focus bracketing, which I need to start learning how to use as well. I want to try that out. Um, yeah, lots of different things, just little bits and things. It's just, just I guess, the, that next level up when you go to full frame and a little bit more pro, you get, I guess, a lot more features. And I've got to just learn how to find, A, where they are, uh, what I need to use, when I need to use it, and how I go about it. <clears throat> So I went down to Trig Beach, uh, you would have seen, a, I did a sunset there a while back with the M50, got some beautiful shots. Um, probably there wasn't as much green moss this time, which probably made a little bit different, but I think I got some nice shots and I'm pretty happy. There's a couple of good little spots, I found a nice little cave and a couple of other little bits in the water, got into the water, the water was fantastic. Uh, yeah, just walked around for a, probably a good two hours solo, just trying to get as many shots. So I did some handheld, I did some slow stuff, uh, getting the water, just trying to, I guess, use it as much as possible. I think that this is the biggest thing with the camera. Uh, the more you use it, the more comfortable you get. Once you get comfortable with it, that's when you're gonna go and get those really good shots because you know what the camera can and can't do. And it's easy to then get a vision in your head of what you want and then know that your camera can do it. So I think I'm still learning stages of this. Uh, I did have some dramas. My, Poor little, uh, my new little great tool that I'm using with the iPhone to do me filming now, to just to take the ease off, a little bit more ease and a bit more flexibility, uh, that DJI OM4, the gimbal's stuffed up completely, uh, just would not work at all, I had to put it away. So forgive me when it comes out, you're gonna get a good good example of the iPhone 12 Pro stabilization, how good that is handheld, because I had, didn't bring me SwitchPod Pro because I had the OM4 and I thought, well, it's one less thing I don't have to carry at the moment. Uh, the iPhone stuff's been going really well, especially with the iPhone 12, the video that is sensational. Um, so I just didn't take it for whatever reason. I thought, oh no, just one other thing I'm not gonna have to carry. Uh, I'm only going for a thing, it's more so about this, the RP and testing that. And I needed that, <laughs> spewing. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've arranged with DJI to send it back and get it sussed out. Don't know what happened there, but yeah, just just keeps falling down. The gimbal, doesn't matter what you do, just calibrate it, whatever, just keeps falling. So DJI is onto it. They're going to, uh, I'm just going to have to get that posted. So it's over Christmas, so that's going to be a bit painful. So hopefully I get it back at the end of this month or early New Year. So I'm ready to go for 2021 because we've got big things coming. So yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, that went really well. I'm very impressed with that. Uh, Battery-wise, was really good. Uh, two, three hours, and I probably only used half a battery, I guess. So pretty excited about that, and very, very cool. So there should be a good video, and it'll give you, I didn't get too many shots with the M50 because I was sort of running around trying to get stuff uh, with this, and I got sort of hooked into trying to learn this. So I didn't get any too many comparisons. Give me a little bit of a chance to 
catch up with this one and I should be on track. So looking forward to when I get to work. Looks like there's been some rain at work, so that might be good. I can go and get some really nice shots. I've got some fantastic spots. I really want to take advantage of that full frame stuff and uh, get out to it. Now, big one today, which is important today. Uh, Zen Jewish sent me an email today. There's 46% off. I don't know why 46, but 46% off anything in Zen Jewish. So if you're looking for a battery pack, uh, a hub for your computer running USB-A and USB-C to a USB-C, anything on those lines, uh, or even new set of cables, today's the day. 46, so I have went on their website and even pre-ordered stuff is 46% off. They've got a brand new 100 uh, 26,000 milliamp battery pack, which I'm sort of looking at, which is half price, which is just insane. That's better than Black Friday. Uh, I think they call it Green Monday or something, uh, but definitely go check that out. That's only today, but one day only. If you want it, you'll have to shoot straight across to Zendua. I think I should have links below so you can get in there and go and suss it out, but uh, definitely worth it if you are looking for that. This is your best chance to get something. Uh, that's a pretty darn good deal. I had to go and have a relook, and yeah, they've got a new uh, OLED screen uh, battery pack coming out, and you can even pre-order that at half price. So it's some super deals if you're looking for something along those lines. Now, other than that, uh, Apple 13, some uh, iPhone 13, not Apple 13, basically iPhone 13, some new stuff there. MKBH is talking about that portless, uh, getting rid of the lightning port or the... USB-C or whatever we hoped and envisaged it to be. I've talked about it several times that I think Apple should be heading down the path that would could be heading down the path for getting rid of that. I don't think, I can't see them putting USB-C in. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think that's that's definitely gone. They've just, that's why they stretched out this lightning so they, oh, very hot today, 40 degrees Celsius, sorry. Um, out in the shed, it's not much fun. <laughs> But uh, it just doesn't seem feasible to then swap to USB-C when basically they're going to get rid of it at some stage. It's got to go. <clears throat> two, two things, questions or queries I have is, uh, I think, yes, it's definitely going to go. I 100% agree with that. It gives them, uh, there's not much left you can do on a phone. That's exciting. But if you can take that phone, make it fully waterproof, then basically you can then attack the whole action market, which is, DJI, um, GoPro, all those models you can take. The cases, you put a moose case like this on, which is basically makes the phone just about indestruct indestructible, uh, or at least drop proof to uh, most points. Uh, you get a waterproof phone in there as well. You can now chuck it on your bike, do all those things. The stabilization, stabilization can get better. They can upgrade those things a lot. You've got amazing cameras in low light. Uh, all those amazing things and you can send it straight away and it's a lot easier to work file wise. I think that's their next, my, my idea is that's their next avenue of attack. They're running out of things, there's only so, so much, I, I guess, cores or so many megapixels you can put into stuff. We did talk on Friday or we talked yesterday about Samsung's 600 megapixel camera sensor. It's, I don't think that's really the way anyone really wants to go anyway. I mean, it's, it's just out of control. That's just huge. You don't need it. Having said that, and I can say that because this is still a 12 megapixel uh, sensor, and the low light on this last night was insane. When I had to when I had to start punching the ISO up on this to 12,000 plus, uh, I could still take video on the iPhone 12 Pro, and it was clear as day. So super mega impressed with the low light on that. So very very cool. Uh, that's up against the RP. Uh, I was very impressed with low light with what this could achieve video wise. I don't think my iPhone 10 would have been anywhere near able to do what that could do. So that was cool. So I think that's the way we go. Now you get rid of that port, it's a hell of a lot easier to do waterproof. You only got a few buttons which you could probably adapt and, and seal up a little bit better uh, or just change their design a little bit. You have a fully waterproof phone say to 10 meters uh, for unlimited time, you covered, how good would that be? I think that's realistically their best option forward to get uh, a short term, I guess in the next five to 10 years, short term uh, growth. And that's what all these companies are looking for. They're looking for growth and to sell more and to get bigger and more market share. 
If you can then attack that action cam market, well, that's a whole other segment you can you can sell to and then take on with your technology. So I think that's more so what they're planning for is to get rid of that. Now, the only problem I do have with it, uh, case in point, Australia, internet here is friggin' terrible. Uh, on a good day, if you get 80 megs out of NBN broadband, if I have that here, I've got NBN broadband business, FTT, FT. TP straight to my house, optical fiber coming straight in the house, and still probably 80 to 90 megs on a on a good 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 day, I guess. Uh, 5G now, I can find spots of it around the city, and, and that's when you hit the 400 megs. You, to get that at home, I could get it here, but you'd have to pay 300 to 500 bucks a month just for your internet, just to get that speed. It's just ridiculous, and no one's going to pay that. Now, you, and that's in the city. You get out anywhere outside of the city into the outer suburbs and you're not going to get anywhere near that. So cloud storage just does not work in Australia. Um, I'm sure other countries, Asia, uh, outer Asia and Africa and South America, those countries aren't going to work as well. And I know, I know Apple doesn't really care about us little guys, um, but cloud is just a pain. I can't do it. I've got all my photos and by the time you sit here and download it too much, works two mega second uh, through the Wi-Fi or if I use my phone it's a little bit quicker and now I've got the iPhone 12 a little bit better quicker in that regards but still ridiculously slow you're not going to sit there waiting I just I'll just get this photo I'll show you this photo hang on just gives five minutes to download this oh, do, 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 do. it just doesn't happen so uh, cloud storage is I think realistically once you get Starlink up and running once he's punching it we're getting 120 megs a second download from space he's doing that now by the time he gets it all sort of rolled out and working we could be anywhere up to a gigabyte a second then you can do cloud storage that's when actual cloud storage might be actually worthwhile as an alternative to broadband and internet it just doesn't work at the moment unfortunately and i think that's where apple's going to hit a little bit of a wall because it ain't much of a selling point except for maybe 40% of the planet uh, that can actually get those speeds that it makes cloud storage usable. Uh, anywhere else, it's it's not even, it's just a waste of time. You just, you might as well just take it on a, a hard drive with you because it, it's going to be 10 times quicker. So that's where I see that. Um, but look, MKBH had a big chat about it. They're saying, uh, Mark Gorman, uh, he was talking to, was saying, more so, Apple's really looking at it at the point of, well, they once they get the cost of the wireless chargers down, I, I don't really see that as, a, as much of a problem. That seems to be, when you're paying $2,000 for a phone, 50 bucks for a wireless charger, are you really concerned about a $50 charger when you're paying $2,000 for a friggin' phone? I don't see how that could be an issue. Uh, he's saying it's more so getting the chargers into the boxes with the, with the phones. Um, look, that's already the case now. If, if you haven't got a wireless charger now, uh, that's really why they got rid of the power brick, wasn't it, already? Because pretty much most people have already gone wireless charging that are, are spending $2,000 on a phone. Um, if you haven't, well, then I guess you're just happy to plug it in. It really ain't that hard. So I can't see it being a point about the wireless thing. Uh, he's, a, he's an expert. He knows a hell of a lot more than me, so I do have to concede that. Um, but, yeah, I thought more so... Those other two reasons, mainly cloud storage is crap in, in Australia and a lot of other countries, I'm sure it's the same. Um, and the fact that becoming waterproof by getting rid of that port gives you Apple a whole other uh, avenue to fight. So something to look and think about. Now, Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 over the later, he was talking about uh, they're gonna, it's going to be slimmer and lighter version coming out this year. He loves it. Uh, he's one of the biggest tech guys on the planet. Uh, he gets everything new there is possible. Um, for him to say that's his favorite phone, that's a pretty big deal. So if he loves it that much and he's definitely gonna be heading back to it after the iPhone 12, he said he really enjoys the 12. Um, but obviously there's something about that foldable phone that gives him a little bit more access to emails and stuff like that. Depending on what you're doing, I guess it, it does make a difference. He said if it does go thinner, and lighter is going to make a big difference. It is a little bit of a brick. So uh, this year's Samsung, and I guess, is it going to have that ridiculous 600 megapixel sensor in it too? 
You couple that with a thinner, skinnier fold, and that fold's probably going to sell very, very well. So it's more, I'm sure we're going to hear more on the fold three uh, in the next couple of months, and so it wouldn't, won't take us too long. Now some DJ, also over the Lou Lady, he had some footage of that DJI FPV drone. Um, specs are coming out um, from a few leakers. 93 miles an hour, uh, that's apparently slower than most your FPV racing drones. They do about 120 miles an hour, but still 93 miles an hour, some footage rolling around the canyons and doing some crazy ridiculous stuff, all in high definition. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, some, I think that's just more added positives towards uh, DJI's uh, value here. It's definitely gonna um, do some amazing things when that comes out. So looking forward to that. I think early in January, we're gonna hear some massive news that's gonna change droning and FPV in one hit. Uh, so yeah, be aware, DJI is gonna boom. If you if you have got shares in DJI, uh, I'd hang on to them for a little bit longer until this one releases because I think it's gonna jump. And then you'll have the Mavic 3 coming, Mavic Pro 3 maybe by March as well. So we've got some big things coming from DJI in 2021. And then last but not least, uh, some news out today, uh, or just not, not long ago, um, Apple, the M1 chip, obviously going ridiculous. I think it's an eight core. Well, by 2021, that's gonna jump up to 16 cores. And they're saying Mac Pro version, uh, so that big expensive box, that the cheese grater worth $20,000 million, uh, that's gonna have up to 32 cores of M1 power uh, we all know what this eight core M1 can do. It blows my 16 inch Pro out of the water. Um, so you can imagine even that 16 core that's coming out next year. So that's gonna be, I, I'm assuming that's gonna be your 16 inch MacBook Pro laptop this year and your new iMac, uh, both gonna be running this 16 core monster. And then your Pro will come out the next year with double that. Uh, that is insanity. Uh, even if you held off another year for the 22 and when the 16, you're probably going to be able to upgrade it to possibly a 32 core M1. So look, huge, huge, wow, insane. Uh, I can't wait to see those, what they can do. It's been fun watching what that M1 chip could do uh, just in these little MacBook Airs. Uh, I can't, can't imagine what you'd need it for when you can see that. But obviously, there's got eight, we got 8K camera coming from Sony. 8K is the new 4K. 4K is now the standard. It's all just going at ridiculous speeds. We've got 600 megapixel sensors. So we're going to have 45 gigabyte photos. <laughs> it's just, yeah, wow. You're going to be able to uh, count the hairs on top of the hairs on top of the hairs pretty soon. So insane. And that's about it. I am absolutely dripping with sweat here in the shed. It's got to be at least 35, 36 degrees outside. And uh, it's probably a little bit warm in here, nice and muggy. Anyway, summer's here. We're into December, Christmas is happening. I'm back at work tomorrow. It could be tricky at work. I have training this week. So I'm gonna do everything I can. Tomorrow's gonna to be a massive day. Um, I've got some training to do with a new person. And then, so we'll see how we go tomorrow night. It might be a late one tomorrow. And then I'm at training all for four days straight doing drones to get my drone license for work. Um, and yeah, I will definitely keep in touch. It might be just a little bit later than normal by the time I catch up. Anyway, I will see you all soon. See you back at work tomorrow. Stay safe, stay happy. Don't forget, get all your Christmas shopping done now because the shopping centers are madhouses. Holy bundy, wow. Radio, when you're coming this way, that way, I'll catch you back at work tomorrow. Peace.